All right, hi guys. So I'm going to briefly talk about the new custom order type system, along with the changes to the front end that go along with it. So to begin with, what we've essentially done is we've allowed users to build their own custom order types with custom behaviors um, coded in JavaScript and to connect to our REST and WebSocket APIs and run those orders from their own servers. Um, so these orders are being executed external to BitPhoenix but they have the ability to communicate with the BitPhoenix front end, which means that they can send notifications, which appear normally at the bottom right. They can also um, update the status of the orders table, more on that in a bit. And they can specify custom order form layouts, which appear here. So those appear alongside the built-in order types. And actually the built-in types as well have been changed to use this new system. So while they look the same, um, the form layout itself is defined with a JSON um, schema, which essentially you can think of it as XML or something like that, um, just like the external user orders. So we provided three built-in types, actually four, but the fourth one is still in development. Um, the, the first cu custom type is Iceberg, which essentially lets a user sell a large amount or, or buy a large amount of a currency um, in smaller chunks and they, they can choose to well I'll go ahead and show you so they can specify a total amount to either buy or, or sell and a slice amount which means that the algorithm will try to to buy and sell the slice amount um, at one time or they can take this excess as hidden box which means um, the leftover amount from the slice can also be submitted into the order book but as a hidden order so it doesn't show up but just in case somebody was to buy or sell against the iceberg order, the full amount could be taken. Um, but for example, let's say that we wanted to sell um, Bitcoin from 1600 and we want to sell two Bitcoins, but we want to do it 0.5 Bitcoins at a time. So this means four slices. Um, the slice amount can also be specified as a percentage. And then there's a submit and cancel delay, which I won't, I won't go into now, um, these values Essentially, this is the delay between the moment that the algorithm decides to submit the order and the moment that the order actually goes out. And this is the same thing, but for cancellation. And they're used to prevent thrashing and things like that, but that's for another discussion. So um, if the, the user clicks on the preview button, what happens is the form takes the arguments and it broadcasts them out over the notification system. And at that point, the user's algorithm server, which I will show in a second, will receive that packet and reply with the set of orders that it would have created had it actually executed. So if I click on preview, we see that it's loading and then we get this little preview box. So there are only two orders um, in total. They're trying to buy two Bitcoins. Oh, wait, that's a mistake, it should be sell. Let me do it again. So in total, they're trying to sell two Bitcoins, but the first slice is for 0.5 and the second slice is for 1.5. Um, this larger order is actually hidden. That that, that does not show up in the form, but we will add that in the future. Um, now, if I click on submit, what happens is that the form sends the exact same packet, but this time with the instructions to start the order. So if I go ahead and do that, we will see it appear here in the orders table. Perfect. So you can see that the excess is hidden, just as expected, and the slice is there as well. And we can also see information about the order. So this is currently static. But in the future, we will allow users to update this line um, in real time. We might even allow some custom controls or something like that. That's for a different discussion. But essentially now, if we were to try to buy into this order, which I, which I won't do now, um, as so if the slice is, is bought into and reduced, both orders will be canceled and a new set of two orders will be automatically sub submitted. Um, for 0.5 as a slice amount and then the new excess and if there's no excess it simply won't be submitted so that's iceberg um, I'll briefly go over the other two types as well um, before diving into the server and how it all works so this is iceberg we also have a market maker type which attempts to buy and sell an amount across a specified spread so this is a bit similar to the scaled order in terms of what it can do because you can also specify to only buy or to only sell. But for this example, <clears throat> I will set up 10 orders to buy and sell with a mid price being the OB mid price. I can also specify a custom price and a spread. So the spread, I will use um, a range for the spread, which means we want it to be from 
twenty dollars between the top um, top bid and top ask from from our bid ask set to a maximum of two hundred. Let's say um, we can also apply some distortion on the price. Let's say ten percent for both, and we can mark it as hidden, but we won't do that. So also, if you were to split, you can specify separate buy sell amounts. For example, if if you only want to sell, you could set the buy amount to zero, but I won't do that now. And then if we click on preview, the same thing happens as with the iceberg order, but this time we have a few more orders. <laughs> so we can see, um, yeah, it looks good. So essentially these are the steps in price and we can verify that the spread between the highest price and lowest price is 200 and the smallest spread here is 20. Yes, as expected between these two prices. So now if I submit this order, we will see it appear here just like the iceberg order type with its own custom header. Let's give it a second. There we go. So of course we need to work on the sorting a little bit, but you can see there the information about the order. So this can also be collapsed. Um, and then there is TWAP. So TWAP essentially tries to either buy or sell um, a specified amount over a specified interval of time. And the hope is that over that interval of time, you would achieve the average price in that time period. Um, in the future, we can modify this, but not. I, I won't go into that now. So essentially it works similarly to the iceberg. So you have your total amount and then the slice size, which it tries to trade on each interval. So in this case, let's say it's 0.2 and we want the intervals to be 10 seconds. Um, the reason why this is a bit difficult to demo now is there is no traffic on staging at the moment. Um, so there are no trades happening, which means that the, the order logic for TWAP can't update. But I will, however, give it a, let's see, last trade price. Let's just try to execute it. Yeah, so the, the preview for TWAP also shows the delays. And of course, this is an estimate because in reality, um, the TWAP order may or may not fill in, in the required interval, depending on liquidity and volume, actually. Um, but this is just a potential preview. So if we were to submit this now, what we'll see is that after 10 seconds, um, an atomic order should appear here to sell 0.2 Bitcoins at the last trade price. There we go. Yes, okay. It would appear that the last price <laughs> is quite bad, but that's all right. So you can see here the trap details. Um, regard, yes, and um, every 10 seconds, it's canceling and resubmitting the order as well, which you can see. Um, if I was to have ticked the trade beyond end box, it would keep the orders open, um, which you may or may not want to do. Um, in terms of price target and price condition, you can specify the trap to trade at the last trade price, at the order book side price or the mid price, or you can also specify a custom price. So let's say we want to achieve 1700 or something um, and then specify which um, where that what that price should match against if that is the mid price of the order book the side price or the last trade price um, but I won't go into this just because the trap is a bit finicky and um, it's it doesn't really show much in the interface I mean in this case it does yeah um, that is essentially it one thing to mention is that the scaled order form has also been updated, but it works in the same way as before. Um, but now for the actual execution of these orders. So what you're seeing here, um, this order appearing and disappearing, that's happening from here. So I'm actually running an, an, an instance of the algorithm server on my laptop. And you can see the output here. Um, if, if I was to kill it, it would automatically, and I'll go ahead and do that, um, it will cancel all of the open orders, so which is a safety mechanism. So I just did Control C, and now yes, all the orders disappeared. Um, so what you see here, and I, I will clear the screen. Um, this folder here, BFX Pub Algo JS, is our algorithm library itself, and it will be open sourced eventually. And it provides those three order types which you just saw: so TWAP, Market Maker, and Iceberg. And these orders are coded up in JavaScript. Um, I, I won't go into details. For example, this is the TWAP order. Um, I can provide them upon request if anybody has any questions. Um, but essentially, these are the order types. And then we provide a server. And all that the server does is it hosts those three types and it listens for, for broadcast messages from the front end to create them or to generate a preview. 
And to make it very easy for end users to get started, we provided an example script, which runs the algo server itself. And I won't go into details beyond saying that all that the user needs to do to run this is to specify their API key and API secret along with the connection strings, um, connection URLs for the WebSocket and REST API. So in this case, I'm connecting to staging. So I need to specify these along with a proxy to get a static IP. And I also specify the database. So this algorithm server, it saves the state of the orders at runtime into an SQL file. And it reads that file when it starts up again. So if I now start this server, it, it, it will resubmit all of those orders that I had open before. And I'll show that happening right now. So it's connecting to the API. And now you see a bunch of output. The colored output you can see here, purple, it's from the market maker. We also had some yellow output from the iceberg. And if I go back, we can see, yes, um, the orders are back. TWAP is also executing. Um, the In terms of the state that gets persisted, um, the orders are saved immediately after changing. So when you shut off the server and turn it back on, it picks up from where it left off. Um, that's really about it in terms of this. It also has the ability to send notifications, um, although these now are being generated by our system. But for example, when the algo server connects, the con connection notification um, is actually coming, I believe, from the algo server itself. I, I would need to check. So that is essentially it. Let me think if I'm missing anything. Um, this is currently a work in progress. So this match midpoint here will be changed to be human readable, along with maybe colors or so, or at least the ability for the user to define custom colors and things like that in this field. Um, but yeah, that is the current state.